Hi everyone, welcome back. We, um, if you watch my video on the mopping hack, you will see that I was about to make meatloaf and I told you that I would take you along with it. So we are gonna make meatloaf for our dinner tonight. It's really quick to throw it together. This is the Pioneer Woman's recipe, but I kind of changed a couple of things from her recipe <clears throat> just to make it a little more doable for us. Like for example, she uses spicy, like hot sauce or Tabasco in her sauce and we don't, I leave that out. And then she also wraps hers in bacon, which is really, really nice. But um, my family has ended up just kind of like peeling it off and throwing it away. So I just don't fool with the bacon anymore because I'm not gonna buy bacon to put it on the thing to throw it in the garbage. That's just a waste of money. So we don't do that anymore. So stay tuned to the end. I will do like I usually do and put a picture of this at the end. There's watermarks, sorry, it's well loved. Um, but we're gonna get started and I will show you the meatloaf. Okay, first things first, you need six slices of plain white sandwich bread. And I just, you know me, I use the cheap 98 cents Walmart brand bread. And then you're gonna pour milk on it. So you need a cup of milk. You're gonna do this first so it can start to absorb the milk while you get the other ingredients together. I know, soggy, wet bread, that's gross, right? But just trust me on this. All right, so we're gonna put that in there and leave that. And then we're gonna get um, the rest of the ingredients. So we need my ground beef, which is over here, Parmesan cheese, seasoned salt, black pepper, minced parsley, four whole eggs. That's all you need. And then if you wanna wrap it in bacon, you need bacon. And then I use, I go ahead and get this pan ready so that that way, while my hands are in there and they have meat on them, I can just, it's ready. All I have to do is plop it on here. Use the roasting pan. And then I put foil in the bottom because it makes cleanup so much easier. We're gonna spray that. Spray over the sink. Okay, I'm gonna set that to the side. Four eggs, some Parmesan. I'm gonna have to get one of the kids to run upstairs. Well, one of y'all right there and get me another Parmesan cheese, please, out of the room. And then we need parsley, seasoned salt, and pepper. Pepper. Parsley. Seasoned salt. Need a third cup measure, and I need some measuring spoons. Thank you. baked scones today. So I have scones over here. I just put out of the oven. They're cooling. And then I'm going to put the glaze. Ooh, it's thundering. All right. So after that, this has been soaking for a minute. Then I've got my recipe up here. Um, you know, put your beef, the bread, the Parmesan cheese, the seasoned salt, the pepper, and the parsley in this. And then you're going to put in your beaten eggs and then we're gonna mix it all together and put it on the pan. So I guess I need to get a bowl. These eggs. This is an easy dinner because it's literally just throw it in a bowl, squish it up and put it on a pan and throw it in the oven. Um, and then while it bakes, it has to bake for about an hour. While it's baking, I can get potatoes on the stove and make mashed potatoes and open a can of peas and dinner is done. All right, so let's get ready. 
All right, so two pounds of ground beef, which is how I portion mine out when we get it from the packing place. We, I portion it out in two pounds, I weigh it, because typically that is a dinner for us, whether it's a meatloaf, whether it's you know part of a lasagna, if we are making hamburgers or whatever, we typically, the four of us, eat two pounds at a time. So, got the beef in there, bread, and I'll need Parmesan cheese, which is a heaping cup. Okay, I'm gonna start with this. parsley if you have fresh that's awesome use it if you don't like me I never have fresh parsley I don't know why I'm trying to do this left-handed close enough milk bread beef parm Season salt, pepper, parsley, and then pour in the beaten eggs. I'm taking my rings off. I'm pouring these eggs. And before I get my hands dirty, I'm gonna move this over here, put all this stuff out of the way. Hoping to grill on the grill tomorrow night. Oh, sorry, but I don't think that's gonna happen now. It's supposed to rain. All right, you're just gonna get in there. Make sure your hands are clean, under your nails are clean. We're gonna get in there, mix it up, and then we're gonna form it into a loaf here. And then I'll show you how to make the sauce. I know, it's gross. The other night, I always make the same recipe the same way ever since I found the Pioneer Woman's meatloaf because I am not a fan of meatloaf. I can take it or leave it. It is, I mean, I will eat it, but it's definitely not something that I would request. Like if somebody said, oh, I'll make you a dinner for your birthday. What would you like? I'm not saying meatloaf. I will pick, there's a lot of other things I could choose. But a lot of people, including my husband, love meatloaf. My daddy loves meatloaf. So my father-in-law loves meatloaf. I just am not one of those people. But this recipe, I will actually eat it. It is good. I do like it. And then I've always made it the same way every time, except this last time when we started getting this meat from the local meat packer. My husband will said, Jason said, what did you do different to this meatloaf? And I said, nothing. That's the same recipe I've always used. He said, no, you did something different because it doesn't taste the same. And I said, like bad? Because I think it tastes good. And he's like, no, it tastes good, but there's something different. And we could not figure it out until I realized that it was the meat that we had gotten from the packing company here instead of the meat that I've always gotten at the grocery store. So that was enough for us. All right, all you're gonna do is you saw what I did. You just plop it on this, plop for lack of a better word, plop it on your roasting pan that we sprayed and kind of form it into a loaf. And then we're gonna set it to the side. I'm gonna wash my hands, come back, make the sauce. All right, for the sauce, it's just dried mustard brown sugar and ketchup 
And if you use her, in her list of ingredients, she's also got Tabasco sauce to taste, but we leave that out at my house. So it's just really easy. It's a cup and a half of ketchup and I do not measure. I just eyeball, it's probably about a cup. And that's probably about a half ish. And then it's a third of a cup of brown sugar, which I just put that in the sink. Not all of this sauce will go on. We'll put about half of it on when you put it in the oven. And then after it bakes for an hour, you're gonna pull it out and just add a little bit more sauce to it and put it back in for like another 15, 20 minutes and then pull it out. But I don't put all of it on there and Jason eats, the, Jason likes to have the extra um, beside his plate to like dip in. So a third of a cup of brown sugar. Now I'm done with that. And then how much mustard? One teaspoon of dry mustard. And then of course the Tabasco, if you're gonna add Tabasco. And then the acid from the ketchup is gonna help to kind of like break up or dissolve that brown sugar. And then it gets in that hot oven, it's gonna caramelize, it's gonna become this thick, rich sauce. Now, if you're gonna wrap it in bacon, you do that now. You would overlap the pieces of bacon, just lay them on the top, and then you tuck the ends of the bacon in underneath the meat and then you would put the top the sauce on top of the bacon but we just skip the bacon and it works out just fine for us so technically this is the pioneer woman's recipe but i tweaked it so this is how we do it okay let me know in the comments do you like meatloaf or are you like me and you're kind of like eh so because Jason wants to keep some of this, I don't touch this with the spoon or like touch it, rub the meat and then put the spoon back in because then he's gonna have raw meat bacteria that he eats. Does that make sense? So to avoid cross-contamination, I just do like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna save this to the side. Then I'm gonna use my spoon and spread it. And then when I go to put more on, I'll get a clean spoon. Yes, it just dirties up another spoon, but I would rather wash two spoons than to him have food poisoning. Nobody wants that. Probably should have put more. I wonder if I could just do it like this. There we go. There we go, that's better. I try not to let it run down the sides too much because it's gonna kind of melt-ish in the oven and do that already. But there we go. All right, and then this is gonna go in the oven at 350 for 45 minutes, which I need to change the oven still on the, what it was for scones. For 45 minutes, then you're take it out, put a little more sauce back in for another 20, and then it's done. So I'm not gonna film that. I will show you what it looks like when it's all said and done. And I'm gonna go here and finish these scones so I can get potatoes going on the stove top and clean up my mess. All right, guys, that's it. I just pulled it out of the oven and I've got potatoes and English peas over there on the stove. Jason just got home, he's taking a shower. I'm about to fix everybody's plates and we're gonna eat because I'm starving. 
and just wanted to show you what it looks like when it came out of the oven and then I'll show you some pictures of what it looks like on the plate. So if you like this video, I hope you hit the like button, I hope you subscribe to my channel so you can see more and have a great weekend or week or whenever it is that you're watching this video. Bye. There it is. Just came out of the oven about two minutes ago. It was sizzling really hard when I first pulled it out and now it's gonna rest for just a few minutes while I make plates, and mashed potatoes, and the green peas, and make drinks, and then we're ready to eat. Yum.